All right, today I'm going to show you how to do gene ontology in Python. This isn't as simple as doing it in R, so I'm going to make my Jupyter Notebook available. So for this example, I'm just using some single cell data. And for this example, I'm just labeling cells with cadherin 5, so endothelial cells, which corresponds to cluster 1. So let's just do gene ontology enrichment on the marker genes for cluster 1. I'm just getting the positive differentially expressed genes above 1.5 log full change. So I have 767 genes. So this method will work with gene symbols or entries IDs. If you have ensemble IDs, you'll need to make a dictionary to convert them. So we're going to be using GOA tools, or as I like to say, GOAT tools. So we'll need to install this. You can just do that with pip. So the first time we run this, we're going to have to do a little extra work because we need to make the background gene set. So just go to NCBI gene, and then what you'll do is copy and paste this. So these are mouse genes. So the mouse taxonomy ID is this 10,090. If you're using human, you would just replace that with 9,606. But let's just copy this whole string here into NCBI gene, and you'll just hit search. So you'll come up with these 26,000 coding genes. And then all you do is send this to file and text file. And then you just hit create file and that'll download. It'll take a minute or two. And once you have that file downloaded, just move it into your current directory. So I'm just moving it from my downloads folder to my current directory. And then this is the tricky part here. You need to find where you installed GOA tools. In my case, I put it in my mini conda environment. So Mine is saved under Miniconda environments, and then SC is my current environment. And then under Ben, you'll find this Python file called NCBI gene results to python.py. So I'm just pointing at that with Python. So I'm calling the file directly, and then I'm passing dash O for the output file. And so I'm going to make an output file called genes NCBI and then must musculus because it's mouse data dot py and then pointing to the file we just downloaded and moved to our current directory which was just called gene result dot text which seems to be the default when you download from ncbi gene so you can just run that directly from your jupyter notebook and in the end we'll have this new file called genes ncbi must musculus protein coding py which is what we called it in this dash o here so we actually import from the file we just made this gene id to nt and we'll import it as this here but right now this works because it's in our current directory but what you can do is actually move this file to where your other um, python imported files are searched by default so you don't have to recreate this file every time you do this and then finally, we can actually get to the gene ontology. You have to import these five different packages here, all from GOA tools. And then we need to run these commands to download some additional NCBI data. And then now if you run LS, you see we have these extra files that we just downloaded. And then if you look at the OBO DAG, it's just a dictionary of different Go terms and their metadata. And then if you look at the file we actually created and then imported, if you pass it an entries gene ID, it'll pull up the information for that gene. And what we want, since our single cell data is using gene symbols, we're going to make a new dictionary called mapper. I'm just going to parse through every item in our imported gene ID to NT thing that we made. And we're pretty much just making a dictionary with the gene symbol and then the entries ID. And then I've also made a reverse mapper here that goes in the opposite direction. And then we'll use this gene to go reader where we pass this fen gene to go, which we should have just made, right? Yeah, we downloaded it up here. So we run this and then we can get the associations and then this is a dictionary of dictionaries. So MF for molecular function and then there's probably a BP for biological processes and then CC and then the entries ID and then the go terms that that gene falls under. And then we need to run this go enrichment study NS. 
which kind of just initializes your gene ontology object. And here, if something was wrong, you would get really low percentages, but these percentages are perfectly fine. And then one more thing I do here is I just make a list of all the go terms which contain duplicate go terms so for example if we count this go term we see that there's 263 of those in this list so we know that that go term has 263 genes in it and then finally this is when we can do the gene ontology so we take our test genes which is just my ec markers and we need to do a loop we can't just map to it because there isn't going to be one-to-one -one matching and you'll get an error so i just do a loop for every gene and our test genes and then i append the dictionary mapped value if it exists if not i just pass and then we can just run this goa object dot run and pass the genes but in the end this just gives you a list of results in a weird format this is the one downside to this GOA tools. It does a good job, but it's not that refined. So what I did was I made my own function, which does the mapping like I just showed. And then the gene ontology analysis, like I just showed, I filter it based on the corrected p-value. And then I parse all the output and I make a data frame from it. And since we were dealing with endothelial cells we see angiogenesis of course is enriched and cell adhesion cell migration these all make sense given that these are endothelial cell markers and then let me just show you real quick what you could do to graph it one way i like to do is just these you know classic bar plots well first i just took the top 10 i'm just going to plot the top 10 and then i make a color map and i map it from the minimum p-value to the maximum p-value of the data and i create this bar you can make it look a lot prettier doing basic matplotlib changes to the text and whatever um, i'm not going to cover that and then same thing for this i just did a very basic but i would of course make it look prettier i did show however because this is important because go terms are often really long and don't fit well on graphs i wanted to show this text wrap so you see here positive regulation of cell migration for example got wrapped it would have gone all the way out to like over here but anyway the first time you do it again it's going to take you a little while to get it set up but once you have these functions going you know everything will be just as quick as if you were doing it in r and this is much more convenient if you're using packages like scanp to do your single cell analysis